So, uh, this is the final level. Yeah. But this is not the final boss video. We're gonna fight him next time. This time, we've got a couple things we need to do before we fight him. Least of which is getting through the level first. I have nothing to say to that. Welcome to the Alright, so... A few of my weapons are level 5. And I need to explain what the level 5 ones do. But first we need to hear something real quick. Get him, Snowball! Look, it's the second best character fighting with, uh... I'm gonna put, place Wargrack up number 7, maybe? 7 sound good? Uh, I'd go for 8. Okay. Alright, first of all, the Rift Inducer now causes explosions when the portal closes, so anybody nearby gets damaged when the duration is over. Uh, the Groovatron, when the dancing is done, the ball falls to the ground and then explodes, also damaging anybody around that. And the Magnet Launcher... Uh, does it explode? It doesn't explode, but it sends a bunch of those little ball bearings that connect the electricity arcs together. They bounce all over the place, and if somebody gets hit by it, they get blown up a little bit. Well, we had a theme going, and then they ruined it. Yeah, I know, right? What jerks. But yes, that's that's all the level 5 things that you did not see turn to level 5. Oh, and Fred's red now. Well, his explosion is red now. Most explosions are red, yes. Well, before he was green, I think. Unfortunately, the path to nefarious... It's a little on the boring side, so the level isn't anything to write home about. I actually like the first time we come here a lot better. It's a little more interesting. Oh yeah, that's the map. I'm just trying to make sure I haven't missed the final Rhino schematic yet. I haven't. It's right up on this particular island. Which is the last island in the level, so it's fairly short. At the very least. Shooting dudes, getting paid. Yeah, even though you really don't need to get paid anymore, because by now you should have bought everything in the game anyway. But yeah, the final Rhino schematic is behind these rocks. It's really, really clever. I think the first time I found it was completely by accident. Sir, you now hold in your hands the only known copy of the Rhino 5 holoplan. You go see me as soon as you can. I'll be in the Axiom City Space. So yeah, that's the only time you actually meet the smuggler in person in this game is uh, when you're constructing the Rhino 5. He literally does not have a name. Nope. He's just a smuggler. He's just a smuggler. We must find a way down to the landing platform before he leaves. Yet he has an action figure and Kronk and Zephyr don't. I know. Which is bullshit. Horrible. So, yeah, let's go get us a Rhino. Those are endangered, and you wouldn't be able to fit it in your ship. Hey, if we can fit Quark in here, we can fit a rhino in here. Quark is at least half a rhino. I have nothing to say to that. that sounds fairly accurate. Probably smells slightly better. Slightly. I don't believe it. You got every piece. Son, when this thing is built, it'd be best if we didn't discuss the matter again. Galactic authorities would throw us both in Zordium just for looking at it. Now stand back. I present to you the Rhino-5, the most powerful weapon in the known universe. You be careful with this thing now. It packs a heck of a punch. The Rhino 5! Simply put, 
This is the deadliest weapon in the known universe. There's only one strategy with this one. Squeeze the trigger! After that, it's clean up on aisle three! The Rhino Five! Guaranteed to rip you a new one! All right, the first cool thing about the Rhino 5. It plays the 1912 Overture when you shoot it. That's amazing. That's what makes it the best Rhino in the series. Gimmick-wise. I'm not even joking, that's amazing. It is amazing. It's... It's the best thing. Power-wise, it's actually weaker than the Rhino 4 because the shots scatter everywhere and it's really inaccurate whereas the Rhino 4 actually homed in on the enemies so it did more damage but oh, come on I like where this is going <laughs> yeah uh, remember how I was super sad that I didn't get that skill point even though I totally earned it uh I'm getting a little revenge. <laughs> this is great. Simple act of Armageddon. Simple art of um, act, yes, of Armageddon. Kill 15 enemies without letting go of the trigger. Impatient pa champion. Win the 60 second cha challenge in 45 seconds or less. And now, to do something I've never done before, win the final challenge of the Raritanium Cup. And I go through most of it without using the Rhino, and look, my gun is pink. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. It's probably been pink for a while in this save file, and I just haven't gotten a chance to use it yet. But yes, um, I lied last video, or the last time we were in the arena. It's not 50 rounds, it's only 20, but they're big rounds. Uh, unlike the last couple arenas, the rounds in this game are fairly big. You just go through less of them. Now, um, I couldn't help but notice that the Rhino can apparently level up. Yes, it can. Uh, I forget what the final version of it is called. But it doesn't have any special gimmicks when it levels up. It just it makes things go boom. Yeah, it it literally has no gimmicks other than point at things, things die. And a two roll overture. Yep, that too. But that's a pretty good gimmick. That is <laughs> a pretty good gimmick. I've been playing the classic Ratchet and Clank lately, and. For the very first time in my life, I've gotten the Rhino 2, and believe it or not, the Rhino 2 is actually not the strongest weapon in the second game. The second game also has this uh, thing called the Zodiac, costs a million and a half volts, and remember how in the uh, last LP the, you said the only way for the Rhino to improve would just to be squeeze the trigger and everything on the screen just instantly disintegrates? I do remember that. That's what the Zodiac does. That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. It's more expensive than the, than the Rhino 2, but it's worth it. You only get four shots at a time. Does it work on bosses? Um, I don't know, because the only time I've been able to afford it was in the post-game, and I've just been using the Rhino on all the bosses. There's very few bosses in the second game that you just fight straight on as Ratchet, anyway. The rest of them all have, like, these gimmicks where, like, you're either Giant Clank, or uh, you're, you have to use the turrets in order to damage it. Something like that. I remembered being Giant Clank. Being Giant Clank was fun. It was. That's the one thing that I miss that the future series doesn't have, and that's Giant Clank. Confession time, I don't use the Rhino until the um, 19th and 20th rounds, which are the Wargrok and the 
Hydra because I wanted to try to prove to myself that I could do this without the Rhino. But by the time I got to the bosses, I was seriously low on ammo and bored and tired and didn't want to do it anymore, so I was just like, fuck it. I'm just gonna instantly kill them. And yes, I do get the Rhino up to level 5 before the end of the LP, and I do show it off. It just basically gets more ammo capacity and kills things faster. I think you've mentioned. Yup. I barely ever use it because it feels like cheating. It kind of is cheating. It kind of is. Especially in the future series where you don't have to buy it. You just earn it by finding things. Kind of old now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't cut any of this. It wouldn't want to affect your artistic integrity. I know, right? LPs are art. I mean, this one isn't, but they can be. It's presumably some are. We don't know of any. They might be out there. I, I know a couple that are. It's uh, just... Actually, uh, the Trespresser LP, I would consider that yeah. one. That one was good. But this, this LP certainly isn't. This LP is just me playing a video game. Occasionally I say things. You're the funny one. I'm the informative one. That's how this works. One way to get to that yeah, whatever you say. I don't, I, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> I'm certainly not funny. What the fuck are you talking about? You may notice that I try to conserve the big guns until the second half of the arena fight because... It's uh, it's a lot easier if you're using big guns on the tougher things. Because, like, those garbage enemies, those, those are child's play. Whatever the fuck those. I don't give a shit. Just kill them with a wrench. I'm so glad you didn't have any of this. I know, right? just have to see all of it. Like, what would we have missed if we hadn't seen you wrench that one guy? I know! This entire LP could have been bumped. Thankfully, we got to see you throw a wrench in the nuts of a wolf. I know. Repeatedly. They can take a lot of sack taps. Imagine getting hit in the cojones with a wrench in real life would probably disable you pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just getting tapped there is bad enough. To being, having a wrench thrown into it, I wouldn't want that. I would probably explode too. Especially one of those big old plumber's wrenches. They're meant for pipes. Yup. So... The big thing about this thing, if you're trying to do it without using the Rhino, is that ammo conservation is a must. You don't want to be constantly firing everything because it doesn't give you too many up ammo refills. It gives you some. But uh, eventually, if you level up your Rhino, enough, you'll have enough damage output and enough ammo that it can literally be the only weapon you use for the entire thing. Because you'll refill ammo fast enough that uh, you don't ever have to worry about switching out weapons. I like that Fred gives you the bolts when he's done. Yeah. 
He's nice. He's our buddy. He's very considerate. Just throw a beer in there once in a while. Yeah. Just throw it right in the bread hole. to tear off their shield, but I just keep throwing it at them instead, so that works out for the best. That guy is tearing it up. Look at him go. I know, right? He's probably the best dancer the Agorians have. Now he's tasting lava. After being hit in the nuts with a wrench. He ain't dancing no more. Dancing in heaven. Eh, I wouldn't say it. Well, uh, yeah. Depends on Agorian afterlife, whatever the hell it is. Probably have know. like a Valhalla equivalent or something. Yeah, probably. Just nothing but endless fighting. This is their Valhalla. I'm fairly convinced that it is. Look, there's his brother. Sure. There was another dude dancing in the same way as he was. Oh, I didn't see it. Well, I killed him. Look, it's him or me. And I like living, so... Alright, let's end this. Let's fucking... Show off how awesome the rhino is, even at level one. I like it's just literally bigger than Ratchet. I'd say it's roughly the same size. Until you turn on the cheats to make it super huge. <laughs> Did you watch that? I watched that. <laughs> it's just ridiculous at that point. Yeah, they they went um. The size categories were, I think. Tiny, big, large, huge, and mega. But there's no big head mode. I know. Now, if you think the Wardrock went down fast, uh, he moves around a lot, whereas the Hydra Tank doesn't. So, yeah, the Hydra Tank, if, if the Hydra Tank didn't have the gimmick of it's invincible while it's doing this, it probably would have died in like 30 seconds. <laughs> By the way, that um, bonus video I posted way at the beginning of the LP where they started glitching out, it was because I was grinding the Rhino for a couple hours and then they just started being weird. Oh god, he's back again! I don't want to die. And for that, we win the Chimpomatic, which turns things into monkeys. Yes. The Chimpomatic was originally designed as a party gag by bored Grummelnet engineers. Simply point it at the poor slug you want to transform and pull the trigger. Presto! Instant monkeyfication. The Chimpomatic. Available only at Grummelnet. <laughs>